Today we're going to go over the perfect squat, which in my opinion is one of the most critical exercises to master after damage to your brain or your spinal cord. In particular, if you're trying to restore a normal walking pattern or you're to the point where you're trying to go up and down stairs with a step over step technique. So in this video, we're going to go into why I think squats are so important. And of course, a progression of exercises to ensure that you're going to learn the proper technique that will carry over into normal walking and that step over step technique when going up and down stairs. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara, I'm a neurologic physical therapist. And on this channel, we talk about anything and everything related to mobility, health, fitness, and mindset in the context of neurologic injury with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to reach your highest maximum level. So first and foremost, why is a squat so important? I think most of you probably think if you are doing squats right now that the reason you're doing them is to make your legs stronger or as a leg strengthening exercise. Well, if you've been following me for a while, you know I don't really focus a lot on strengthening. I'm much more concerned with relearning or restoring normal movement patterns. So why would I choose a kind of strengthening exercise as one of my top exercises that I think everyone should do as part of their home ex exercise program. And the reason is, is because a squat is not necessarily in the context of neurologic recovery, is not necessarily a strengthening exercise, but it is an exercise that teaches your hip, knee, and ankle to coordinate together appropriately, which is critical for the standing phase of the walking cycle and for stepping up with your weaker leg when going upstairs. Now, before I get into like why that exactly is or what you should focus on when doing your, doing your squat, first let's talk about why you've lost the ability to do a normal walking pattern. And in most cases, after damage to your brain, you've lost the ability to coordinate muscles. So again, you don't have weakness. The brain, the control tower has just lost the ability to get multiple muscle groups to work together in kind of like a synergistic pattern. In most cases, this is due to overactive muscles as a result of spasticity, which is an involuntary muscle contraction. Primarily, the overactive muscles in this case, in most cases, are the quadriceps. So if you're someone where your leg shoots out whenever you try and sit down, that's usually because you have an overactive quad quadricep muscle or the muscles that straighten the knee out. Uh, or if your knee goes into hyperextension when you're walking, in most cases, this is not the only reason people go into knee hyperextension, but it is overactive muscles in the muscles that point the foot. So when your foot hits the ground and your calf muscle wants to point the foot, the foot can't go anywhere because it's on the ground. So what happens is your knee goes backwards. So if you're someone that your knee goes backwards, in most cases, that's because of an overactive gastroc muscle, which is the muscles that point the foot. If your leg shoots out from under you when you try and sit down or when you try and stand up, that's usually due to an overactive active quadricep muscle or the other kind of abnormal movement pattern that happens after a brain injury or a spinal cord injury is that you get abnormal muscle synergy. So muscles have linked up abnormally or in an unnatural manner. In the case of walking, in most cases, people will use an extensor synergy pattern, meaning whenever you want to extend your knee or straighten your leg, your foot wants to point. That's part of an extensor synergy pattern. Those muscles have linked up abnormally. So that's another kind of movement problem that'll interfere with normal walking. So now why is a squat so valuable? Well, a squat teaches your hip, knee, and ankle muscles to kind of work together and come in at the appropriate time, training your muscles to work in more of what we call like a normal synergy pattern. So for the squat that we're going to go over in this video or the technique that I like in this video, what we're trying to learn how to do is learn how to extend the knee without the foot pointing 
That's, that's one benefit of a squat. The other benefit of the squat is relearning how to get the knee muscles to come in at the right time with the hip muscles. So if you have an overactive quadricep muscles, a lot of times that quadricep muscle comes in before the hip muscles. And so that's why your knee goes into hyperextension or why you always feel like you're kind of back on your heel when you try and stand on that leg when you're walking. So a the squat technique that we're gonna go over today is to try and address that. So kind of get the knee muscles and the hip muscles to work together in a coordinated fashion. Now, when you go online, you're gonna find a ton of different philosophies on what the perfect squat is. Most of those are based on kind of the best strengthening exercise. If you've had damage to your brain or your spinal cord, I highly recommend that you use the technique that we're gonna go over in a few minutes here because what we're gonna do is we're not gonna be like quad dominant or glute dominant. You'll hear a lot of those words used when you go to um, just kind of like general strengthening gurus or influencers. The technique that we're gonna go over today is 1000% specific to restoring normal synergy between the hip, knee, and ankle muscles and to decrease or relearn how to stand on the involved leg without some of those overactive muscles kind of being dominant. So kind of learning how to inhibit some of those overactive muscles from taking over. So again, this isn't the only technique for learning a squat, but I do think if you want to relearn how to go up and down stairs or walk with a normal walking pattern, I do think that this is the best technique. So it's really, really important to understand that the squat technique we're focused on is learning how to keep your center of gravity, base of support over your feet and learn how to engage those hip muscles and those knee muscles in the right rhythm. So the first progression in this building this foundation for this squat is to learn how to bend the knees at the, and the hips at the same time and to straighten them out in the appropriate rhythm. So you're gonna start by standing with your feet about six inches away from the wall and you're just gonna do a little bottom tap. Really focus on bending your hips and your knees at the same time and then come off the wall. Now, if you do have this quad dominance, a lot of times what you're gonna, what's gonna happen is you're going to get your butt against the wall and then you're gonna straighten your knees out and then bring your butt off the wall. So you really wanna avoid that. Your knees and your hips wanna bend at the same time and your knees and your hips wanna come out, want to straighten at the same time. So you should be moving away from the wall at the same rate that your knees are extending. So that's what you wanna focus on for this. Again, tap and then knees and hips at the same time coming off the wall. Now, once you feel like you've gotten really good at coordinating those hips and those knees, again, to straighten in rhythm with each other, next I like to go to having a chair behind you. And for this progression of the squat, what you wanna try and do is sit your bottom over the chair and just kind of go down low enough to where you're grazing the chair and then come back up. Now you can see I'm not back on my heels and I'm not really worried about my knees dropping over my toes, which some people argue that that's a bad squat technique. Again, we're trying to keep your center of mass, your body, not too far behind your feet and not too far in front of your feet, but kind of directly over your feet. So the chair just helps. In most cases, a lot of times people um, are too far forward. They don't sit you they don't sit their bottom back after a stroke or a brain injury. So the chair kind of helps you to cue sitting your butt back over the chair and then coming back up. Now you can use a higher chair or set something in the chair if this is too difficult. If you can't sit down this, this low, start with a higher surface. Now you wanna set yourself up for success. So you want the easiest technique that you can be successful with, but hard enough that you're challenging yourself a little bit. Okay, so if you need to start with a higher chair, just start with a higher chair. And again, you're gonna go down until you're just grazing the chair and then you're gonna come back up. Now, there is one compensation that's extremely common for people that have hemiplegia, and most of you probably already know what I'm gonna say, and that's sitting with all your weight over your strong leg. So basically compensating with your strong leg. There's a variation of this squat that I really like for any of you that have really strong compensatory strategies. 
and that is using a yoga block and a strap. So yoga block between your feet. and strap around your knees. Keeping your feet slightly closer together, more like hip width apart versus shoulder width apart, makes it harder to compensate. And again, you just wanna kinda of glance down and make sure your knees aren't drifted off to one side. So you wanna make sure your knees are directly over your feet and then squat down and come back up. Again, keeping that chair behind you and really focus on trying to sit your bottom over the chair. So again, making sure you're not drifted, your knees aren't drifted off to one side, but that they're really centered directly over your feet. You're gonna go down, graze the chair, and then back up. And again, down and graze the chair, and back up. Now, this is a variation of a squat that I really like for anyone who your leg rotates out to the side. Again, remember, the squats that we're working on in this progression are really all aimed at learning how to coordinate your hip and your knee muscles together and not do any type of an abnormal movement pattern. So I really like to activate the adductors when you do this uh, squat. In most cases, people externally rotate or the leg rotates outward because the glute muscles um, rotate the leg outward. So to kind of stop the glutes from being dominant, we want to kind of get the internal rotators involved a little bit more, the muscles on the inside of the thigh a little bit more involved. So yoga block between the legs. You're going to squeeze the yoga block as you sit down. And again, for this one, you want to make sure your knees are directly over your feet. You don't want to, you want to make sure you're not drifted off towards your strong side. So again, down and back up with your feet directly or with your knees directly over your feet, squeezing that yoga block, making sure not to use, drop that yoga block. A lot of times as people lower, that knee will go out to the side and that yoga block will drop. So really focused on squeezing that yoga block together, or squeezing those knees together against that yoga block. Now this next squat progression, of course, we're just dropping down lower, same technique. Really make sure you master squatting to just a chair height before you go down to this lower surface. But I highly recommend that if you are working on your squats, that you include some sort of progression where you're working lower and lower towards the ground, trying to get down to kind of this height, which is like 12 to 18 inches off the ground. So again, for this one, just making sure you have a good rhythm. Hips and knees are bending in rhythm with each other. You don't want to feel like when you're, a lot of times what happens when you get start to get down to this lower surface, people just fall back. So it's really learning how to let those knees drop forward on this lower kind of squat. And then keeping your arms out in front of you does help to kind of keep your weight centered over your feet. And then you're gonna go down. And now coming up is the hard part because again, your quads in, in the instance of being quad dominant are gonna push you backwards and you're gonna actually fall backwards or that's what happens a lot of times. So again, it's about learning how to extend your hips and your knees in rhythm with each other. So if you feel like you're falling backwards, it means you're trying to kind of lift up a little bit too quickly. So you wanna kind of keep flexed over a little bit more Keep that center over your feet and then stand up. And then once you feel like you have that down, it's helpful to kind of keep your arms out in front of you to keep that nice rhythm. And then if you really wanted to challenge yourself, and this is, makes it a little bit harder, you can try holding a bar behind your back. And again, it just makes it harder to keep your weight distributed evenly. Squat down and try and push back up. And then just for fun, because you know I always like to do some sort of an exercise where you're overly biasing your weak leg, we are gonna do kind of a working towards a single leg squat. So if this is my involved leg, I always recommend that if you're doing any type of a squat as part of your home exercise program that you do some type of a single leg bias squat. So in most cases, if you have hemiplegia, you've lost that rhythm on your involved leg. So that's the leg that you wanna focus on. So 
setting your foot up on a higher surface, I would go back and do that same progression we just went through as far as the wall, then the chair, then the low stool, going back to the wall, now biasing that leg, and just sitting that butt back, tapping the wall and coming off. So this would be the progression, same order that we just went through, doing that single leg bias. So basically doing a single leg squat, back and back up. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you liked those videos of those exercises, don't forget we do have a monthly membership that does give you access to over 300 exercises where I go through tons of different progressions for a lot of the functional mobility activities that you guys are trying to get back to if you've had damage to your brain or your spinal cord. Also with your membership, you do have access to our monthly live sessions where we meet and I answer your specific questions. Another way that you can support this channel is to check out our store on Amazon where I've got all my product recommendations all in one place, as well as tutorials where I show you or demonstrate how I use some of those products. And another way that you can keep in touch during the week is to follow us on Instagram, where I do post exercise videos a couple of times a week just to kind of help change up your home exercise program and address some of your specific movement problems. So definitely head over there and make sure you follow us on Instagram. As usual, I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I will see you in the next video. Have a good day.